can we use AI to reduce the number of dependencies that we have? So before we start, let me tell you one thing. This is not my usual type of video, because in this video I want to think out loud with you to get your opinion, to see what you think about this approach, if it's something that you can see yourself doing, and if maybe there's a different way to improve this. But let me start with the challenge that I was trying to face. So I was building something and I needed one specific feature that I know that a given library has that feature. The problem is that that library is built in a way that to bring that feature in, I need to bring a huge thing into my application that I will not take advantage of. So I just want one small function that is there and I know it's well built there. So should I implement it myself? Should not. And my approach was the following that I will show you. And I want to know what you think about this approach. If it's something that you can see yourself doing, if it's not. For that, let me use a different library as an example, because it will simplify the process. And I believe that this way you'll have a clear vision on what I'm trying to transmit. So think about the following. You are building an application and you are familiar with this um, famous library that is Humanizer, okay? And Humanizer is a great .NET project that has a ton of features for small things like uh, transforming, uh, for example, dates, time, uh, numbers, quantities, all of that stuff into strings. And I believe that some features to do it in the other way around as well. For example, things like this, where you want to transform something that is uh, with in capital case, and you want to transform it into, for example, lowercase or title case, those type of stuff. For example, one of the features that I got familiar with, with it was this one where we can humanize a given text that you can have, for example, in your code. And I want to transform that into something more human readable. For example, when you have something like an error code or something like that. Okay, doesn't matter. But this package is huge, okay? And now let's say that I'm looking for a specific feature inside here. Okay, let's pick one. And for example, that's this one, the time only to clock notation. That Let's say that I want to use this, okay? For example, if I say time only for the um, three, uh, it will say three o'clock in English. If I'm in uh, Brazilian Portuguese, it will be tres em ponto. Um, it will depend on the region, basically. So I want this feature. Do I need to bring the whole package in or not? That's a typical question. It's something that I believe that we'll start discussing it a lot uh, with the, all of that stuff that is going on open source. I can see teams becoming a bit more selective on the things that they bring in. So. I can see the question of should we implement ourselves this thing or should we uh, bring a package? Th those type of questions will happen a lot. And while in some types of packages that it's a no-brainer, it will be using a ton of features. We want to keep going with the updates. In small things like this, it might be worthy to think about should we implement ourselves. So I had to do something similar to this. I wanted this feature uh, on my code and. What was my approach? It worked well. I needed to polish some things, but I want to know your opinion. So what I decided to do was the following. I went to AI and I usually use cloud for this type of stuff. And I decided to, to ask for the following. So I said, based on the NuGet package and provide the name of the NuGet package, create a library only with the features and I enumerated the features. And on this case, it was basically the time only to clock notation. Then I said the following, use the GitHub project as a reference, grab the link, paste it there. The code will be used as a internal package. And then I went one step further and I said, keep in mind, that I'm not building a library to be available publicly. So let's simplify the implementation 
only considering the enumerated features. So what I've done is that I went to Cloud. I usually use Cloud. You can try it with something like uh, OpenAI, uh, ChatGPT, or other um, LLM. And my approach was the following. Let's prompt the uh, Cloud to do the following. Based on the Nougat package, and I provide the name of Nougat package, create a library only with the features, okay? And I did it this way because um, if I wanted, for example, two or three features of that package, I could list them here. Then I said, use GitHub project as a reference, provide the link. The code will be used as an internal package to make that clear. And then I reinforce that. Keep in mind that I'm not building a library to be available publicly. So let's simplify the implementation by considering only the enumerated features. What's my goal? Let's focus on that feature. I don't know how that feature is built, okay? I don't know the requirements. I don't want to specify the requirements now, but I know that I like the experience of that package. But I don't want to bring the complete package in. And I don't want all of the semantics about uh, the package that are available for the sake of the other features. So let's try to do exactly the same in the simplest way possible. So with that, I asked Claude to do it. So let's see the results once they are ready. So Claude did the, his work. And now if we take a look on, on it, I think I like what I see. Okay, so he organized it exactly as a library and as a sample of a project using that. Also, you'll have here some examples like in the readme file, what is pretty cool, explaining how to install that library and all of that. But let's see how the code is built. So I will copy this thing into a project and I will see you in a moment. Okay, and here it is. So he organized the code as a library and as a program that will use that library. So I built it exactly in the same way. Time notation, pasted all the code there. Also the code for the program. And then inside of the program CS, we have, we have it using um, the two clock notation, the method that we were expecting to have. And we can see that it sets the culture to English and also to Brazilian Portuguese. So if we run this code, okay, we can see it runs successfully. We have the output for English and for Portuguese, and it looks fine. But the interesting part to me is the following, is that we have, for example, this two clock notation that if we go into the library is exactly the same approach. So if we copy and paste this into our code, we can see that the code compiles. Okay, so it's basically using exactly the same syntax, exactly the same developer experience that the one that I was looking for. Besides that, if we go into the search, let's look for the place where that extension is. So we have this two clock notation is an extension to the time only. And the approach from humanizer is to have an extension method. Okay. It's a typical approach for this type of problem. So, but the cool thing is that if we go into the source code that was generated, we also have an extension exactly with the same name. Then we can see that the approach is even similar. So we have this configurator, time only clock notation converter, same naming, all of that. But the part that I'm curious is how this part is, is implemented. So you can see that AI generated um, two classes that are two different converters for two different cultures. And there, for example, we have this list of um, words that need to be mapped, for example, for Portuguese. So I believe that if I search, for example, for três, that is three in Portuguese, in the source code, I should find that somewhere. Okay, there's a class Portuguese number towards converter. And I think that here is where it started to simplify because in this approach uh, of humanizer, they need to cover more things than the ones that I'm looking for. For example, they need to cover things like units, 
they need to um, to cover things like um, the hundreds, for example, the uh, 100, 200, all of those things. While on my approach, I don't need that. I just focus on the time only. So it simplifies that part. So in summary, it did a pretty good job as a, a starting point, and I didn't need to think too much on the the details. I didn't need to think about, uh, too much on an approach to build this type of stuff, okay? And that is the part that I like, is the fact that I, I know what I want to build. I know that there's a, an existing library that has one part of its scope is exactly the thing that I'm looking for. I know that they addressed all the problems that I will need to address. I know that they are specialists on that on that thing. So why not trying to build that thing based on the original uh, example? That way I know that I will have a, a, a valid approach, okay? It's a, a battle-tested approach, likely. Uh, I know that most of the use cases will be covered. And even then, I, I know that this will be maybe 90% of the job, and I still need to polish this thing, uh, obviously, okay? However, I think it's an, a good approach to quickly do something that you don't master, but you know that there's a small feature somewhere, but you don't want to bring the full dependency in. We know the reasons, we discussed that before. But this doesn't mean that this is a perfect um, solution, to be honest, because there's some things here that I really don't like. The first of them is the, the fact that I don't like, that I don't know exactly what is being built, okay? I then can, can go there and read uh, how it was implemented. Uh, I can try to understand if it's following the code, uh, the original code that I, I want to use. But more than that, the thing that I don't like is the fact that uh, now I need to maintain this code while there's a library out there that I could be using. I don't like that, okay? But as we discussed before, some companies, some managers don't like that, don't like the fact that we are depending on too much stuff. And nowadays, at a given point, the, the license can change and we have a problem, okay? Um, for example, I can tell you a personal story uh, I used to work at a company where I was responsible for uh, open source. And I recall um, one specific library that was not from the .NET space, but it was from uh, JavaScript space, that they changed the, the license to something that was extremely protective. Um, so we had to replace that library. And when I said to the team that um, they needed to do it, for them, it was quite easy because they were only using that thing for a small, uh, for the sake of a small feature that they quickly implemented them themselves. Okay, and on some cases like that, maybe it's not worthy to bring uh, a dependency in the library. In the other thing that I obviously don't like is that this somehow corrupts the spirit of um, open source, and so I have mixed feelings with it. However maybe it can be useful to you. So don't judge me too much on this one. Um, I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to, to hear what you think about this. Uh, maybe it might be something useful. I don't know. So I've been trying to find many more different ways of using AI in my day-to-day. -day. When I have a different type of problem, usually I first try to think, okay, can I use AI to quickly do this, to reduce part of my work for is the 80-20 principle, the Pareto principle, okay? Can I do 80% of the work with 20% of the effort, and then I will focus on the other 20% uh, and try to polish the thing? And this one was one way that uh, came up to my attention. Um, there's other thing that I've been doing with... AI lately that you can see right here that is using AI to quickly understand source code that I'm not familiar with. And I think you might like that one.